And linebacker slash defensive end, yeah. Jeremiah Tauchu. Is that what we're going to see this year? Yeah. All right. First, before we get going with questions about the season, now you are a returner here to the yeah. kickoff. Have you given Will any advice about the day, answering questions all day long? Uh, just, you know, keep it fun. Uh, Will Will has a great personality, so he has had no problem with that. You know, he's kept it, kept it fun and pretty happy. All right. Now let's find out what kind of questions you have to answer. Uh, do we have questions? Well, I'll, I'll start with one. That's fine. That's not a problem at all. Um, well, let's talk about the change. Big change on offense is, you know, Tevin Washington is gone. Badly, who did play a fair amount last year, is now your quarterback. What's the difference? What do you expect from Badly this year? Well, I think the biggest thing about Badly is uh, he's come in as a young guy, but he, he's got such a maturity about him and a confidence that he almost comes off as a, as a junior or senior. He, he really takes command of the huddle, which is something that's, that's very critical for a quarterback. And physically, he, he's also very talented as well. And he, he can throw the ball extremely well, uh, about as well as anybody has since I've been there. And then running the football is also very dangerous. So I'm excited to see what he can do when he gets into camp and uh, starts competing with some of the other guys that are, that are going for the quarterback job. But he's had some success so far. That brings you something up that I was thinking about. Would you like to pass block more often? I honestly don't even know what pass blocking feels like anymore. <laughs> uh, no, not really. But uh, it's, uh, it's I, I mean, uh, it's it's a good aspect of our offense if, if we decide to throw the ball a little bit more. But uh, we have a lot of success running it. That's, that's our bread and butter. And uh, if Coach decides that he wants to throw the ball a little bit more to suit that or Justin, whoever's playing quarterbacks, talents, then I'm more than happy to pass block a little bit more. Dance Tora, DTB Media. You have two new teams in Syracuse and Pittsburgh. You'll face them both this season. I'll start with Jeremiah, but for the both of you, what do you know about the teams and what's your expectation? Uh, I'm excited to compete as a breath of fresh air to have new teams, you know, and to have them both on our schedule. With our, my, our last year of college football is exciting. So, you know, having that exposure and being able to play, you know, guys from another part of the country, that's, I mean, that's exciting to have. And like what Jeremiah is saying, it's, it's always good to compete against different teams, and, and bringing those two in is, is certainly doing that. And I can remember, I know we're playing both Pitt and Syracuse, and they're both great teams. I remember watching the Pinstripe Bowl and seeing Syracuse just absolutely slap West Virginia around, and they're a great team. And uh, Pitt, they've got so much tradition. I think they're both going to bring a lot to the conference. It'll be fun to compete with. Right, in the back. Jeremiah, Eric Hager from WSB TV in Atlanta. How much change is it for you from going from linebacker to defensive end? And what's been your, I guess, experiences with Coach Roof? Uh, it's been uh, it's been a smooth transition. Uh, three four outside linebacker is a little different from a conventional four three outside linebacker uh, for the fact that you're, you know, you're on the line of scrimmage just like the defensive lineman, but you're standing up, you're rushing the passer, you're playing the run. You you only have one more responsibility, which is coverage. So, you know, last year I was doing 50-50, rushing the passer. You know, covering receivers and other assignments. Now, you know, my, my assignments are dumbed down, so I'm just putting my hand in the ground, getting after the quarterback, playing the run. So, you know, it's helped me focus on just, you know, uh, two assignments, Sim simplifying and getting better, those two things. And also, uh, coach, having Coach Roof, you know, a guy who's a Georgia Tech alum, you know, having him be our, you know, our defense coordinator is kind of exciting to have a guy who can relate to us with the academics and, you know, the athletics at Georgia Tech, a guy that you can be in the room, you know, talking to him, his picture is on the wall, as a player, it's kind of it's nice to know that you you don't really see him as a coach figure, you see him as a guy who went here and is coming back to help his school out, he's passionate about what he does. Your game against North Carolina uh, set a record for most points in a game involving ACC teams, I think a record that had stood since the 60s. Is that kind of the prototype for the new ACC? Will Jackson, why don't you go first? I'm not really sure. I guess it could be. You look at North Carolina, they, they've brought in a high-flying, no-level attack, and then our offense is conducive to score certainly a lot of points and, and get a lot of yardage. But uh, I think it's yet to be seen. I think some of those things might go in cycles, and some teams are a little stronger defensively um, in the past, and maybe the past season they, they hadn't been, but in the future their, their goal is to improve on their defense, and then and it might it might come back and, and flip the other way. It's just it's just tough to say. But I know that's something that we really pride ourselves on at Tech is to take care of the ball offensively, score a lot of points, and take a little bit of pressure off the defense. So 
Um, I know that's, that's our personal philosophy. Defensive perspective? Uh, defensive perspective. Uh, it, was, it wasn't too impressive. I mean, uh, on both sides of the ball. But, I mean, North Carolina has that you know, new high-flying offense that, you know, that teams are turning to these days. So, I guess it's kind of it's making the ACC a little more exciting, a little uh, variation of different types of offenses week in and week out. Uh, including the triple option, so uh, definitely that definitely played a part in the high scoring last year because I mean we both teams really weren't you know ready or aware of what each other was I mean, each other was going to bring to the game. Eric Baker from WSB TV in Atlanta. For both of you guys, Georgia Tech always seems to be on the short end of the stick for respect when the rankings come out. Is that something you guys talk about? Is it an issue that comes up in the locker room? It is and it isn't. We, uh, we always talk about the only people's opinion we care about is our coaches and our teammates. We don't really listen to a lot of the outside noise that goes on and what people think of us. But on the same token, it's always good to see that people don't have a lot of respect for us going into a season. I remember in 2011, we weren't very highly regarded and we surprised a lot of people. So coming up with a chip on your shoulder going into fall camp, I think it can certainly help you and be a good motivational tool. I definitely, we definitely recognize the disrespect. But, I mean, it's not really something we focus on. It's just, you know, it's kind of the, it's just the underdog, you know, persona that we take on every time we go out and play. And, you know, as a, you know, Georgia Tech, you know, as a school, it kind of makes you, you know, humble. You're an under, underdog when you go in and take a test. So, you know, we're, you know, we're used to that feeling. And uh, we know we have to work twice as hard to earn people's respect. Last year, you guys were in minutes. You really had a chance at the end of the ACC championship game. Is that motivation now, knowing you came that close? Jeremiah, why don't you go first? Uh, it's definitely motivation knowing we came that close, knowing that we can compete with the with the uh, cream of the crop in the ACC when other teams can't, and knowing what we really what we really you know are capable of doing. You know, as when we put our minds to it, and uh, we we came up you know just short of, of winning that game, and it could have been a completely different story. Yeah, it definitely serves as motivation to get so close to what at the start of the season is one of your ultimate goals and winning a conference championship. And you can hang your hat a little bit on winning your division, that's great, but at the end of the day, we, we want to win the whole thing and, and be playing in Miami for, for the Orange Bowl. And getting so close, it, it's really bittersweet, but I'd say overall it's been a great motivational tactic for us. Eric Hager from WSB Atlanta. You guys are sort of the kings of the Thursday night games. Can you talk about how the excitement of that and what do you tell the freshmen coming in and how to be prepared for that? Will, go ahead. You go first. I love Thursday night games. Those are uh, typically the only team playing, and all eyes are on you, ESPN National Television. I know that's, that's the biggest game where my friends and family in Knoxville, Tennessee, or I've got family in Nebraska, I can always count on getting text messages from them showing support before and after the game because they're watching at such a big stage. And play a night game on top of that, which is the most electric uh, time to be playing. And then when you're playing teams such as Clemson or Virginia Tech, it's, uh, it's I mean it's, it's the biggest stage in college football in my eyes. So I love Thursday night games because you're guaranteed to be having one of those experiences that you signed up for when you wanted to play college football. Uh, Thursday night games are just a fabulous experience, and especially in Atlanta, like at, you know, in the middle of the week, you're you know coming into the city, driving into the city, to the stadium, and you just see, you know, the traffic just stops and opens up for you, and it's the main, you know, it's the main attraction, and it's, it's really a special feeling to be, to be able to, you know, play on Thursday nights, and the fact that we have two of them is, you know, it's very special to be able to go to Death Valley and play there on th Thursday nights should be very electric, so we're, you know, we're excited about those opportunities. Will, I know I asked you about the pass blocking earlier, but what is the key to being an alignment and blocking in Paul Johnson's offense? I would say toughness. Toughness and, and aggressiveness might be kind of a vague term, but our offense is so predicated on getting out of your stance and, and being the aggressor and not keeping the defense on their heels and making the defense basically guess right and, and be well-schooled how they're trying to defend us. And playing up front is just about firing off the ball and getting into a guy as opposed to some other offenses that, that might wait and see what the defender's going to do. Our thing is to fire off the ball, be the aggressor, and then make them react to us. Eric Baker from WSB in Atlanta. Jeremiah, can you talk about playing against that offense during practice and 
and the chance to sort of you have to pull back when the quarterback's got the ball? How hard is that? Uh, we, have, we don't pull back because they're trying to run us over in practice. So, uh, we're, I mean, our offense hates players like me, guys who are aggressive, guys when they get cut, they bounce back up. And, you know, those are the teams that, you know, have success. It's not you, you have to learn how to be tough playing against our offense and not crying when you get cut to the ground. So, I mean, just uh, just pure aggression. Guys are extremely – guys on defense who are aggressive. It, it brings out the personality. If you're a passive guy, you're going to let yourself be – I mean, you're going to be cut and then you're going to lay on the ground. But, you know, guys – the guys that bounce back up, like the, you know, Miami guys, like when they get cut, they bounce up. <laughs> so, you know, those are the guys that have success, you know, playing against our uh, option. Question for Will. You lose Owen Smith, who I think departed with maybe the highest per carry average in the history of the ACC. It's a loss, and yet in your offense, because so many guys touch the ball, is it maybe easier to replace a, a player like that? Your, your perspective on that? Well, it's never easy to replace a guy like Orwin. He's one of the best football players I've ever been around. And he's just a dynamic playmaker, and anytime he touched the ball, he could go the distance. But that being said, our offense, it does make it relatively easier to slide someone else in there. And we, we've got a great stable of running backs that, that are more than capable of producing this year. So I, I don't think it will be a, a huge loss, but it certainly will affect us because he was such a talented football player. Will Jackson, Jeremiah, touch you guys. Thanks. Before I let you go, I want to brag on you just for just a second. You are on the preseason watch list for the Bidneric, the Nagurski, the Butkus, and the Lombardi Awards. Expectations are high, and I know you'll fulfill them. Uh, Jeremiah, touch you. Will Jackson, guys. Thanks.